Good morning to you. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It is hashtag finally Friday. That's right. End of the week. You got a nice weekend coming up. The weather should be a little warm, but nice outside. Hey, we're back on HCC TV these days. You can catch us. Uh, of course, you're watching us live on YouTube and Facebook right now. We appreciate you joining us. If you missed the, sh- the live version of the show, you can always catch the rebroadcast on HCC TV at noon and 5 p.m. So so today's Friday, special guest today on the show, of course, Frank Cooper is joining us every Friday. Frank, good to see you again. Good to be here, boss man. How are you doing today? It's a good day. Things are looking good outside. I don't know if you had a chance to watch the game uh, that was on last night, but uh, uh, the Cleveland Browns, of course, Baker Mayfield's out right now. So our hometown hero, Case Keenum started for the Cleveland Browns. Go Cougs, that's right. And uh, for all the teams, including the Texans, who let him go, who don't have a quarterback worth a darn right now, they got a chance to see what a great backup looks like. They win the games. So there you go. Uh, Frank, I'm sure we'll have a lot more news to, for sports news to talk about later. Uh, but we also want to remind folks to follow us in social media. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're on five days a week. Hit us up on YouTube, our search Houston Community College up to the minutes. Hit, hit, hit the okay, uh, hit the, the bell to get all the latest episodes, campus interviews. We're also on Facebook live stream right now. Later on uh, today, we'll be on LinkedIn and Twitter as well. So let's grow the show, guys. All right, Frank, stick around. We'll check in with you in just a little while. So it's uh, up to Friday, and we've got a special guest joining us from the Coleman College of Health Sciences, Dr. Chandra Mittal. He is a professor of medical biotechnology. Dr. Mittal, good morning to you. If we can get you to unmute your microphone. And uh, we're having a few issues with the microphone. We'll check in with you in a few minutes, Dr. Mittal. So stand by. Uh, We'll get back to you in about uh, 10 minutes or so. Stick around. Okay. It's Film Friday as well on HCC TV's Up to the Minute. And we've got a special guest joining us right now, Sybil Joy Signs. She's a content creator, a multidisciplinary artist. Short film is called Urban Trade, and she's our Film Friday guest. Good morning to you, Sybil. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I'm so blessed to be here today. I've been editing all night until way early this morning, so I'm operating right now in about two hours of sleep. So, (laughs) Join the club. Yeah, we roll in here sometimes that way as well. Um, Let me ask you, Sybil, congratulations on your uh, upcoming film, Urban Trade. Um, Before we get into that, let's talk a bit about your background. You were from HCC. You were a student here not that long ago. Yeah, I actually started my HEC career in 1994, and I finally got my degree in 2012, um, which had led me to pursue a lot of opportunities that I normally wouldn't have without a and a degree, even though it's just an associate's degree. So I'm very grateful to have had that experience at HEC. And you are also involved in the Southwest Alternate Media Project, been around for years. It's uh, known as Swamp. Tell us about that. Yeah, so after um, my experience at HCC, I uh, started at Swamp part-time, and then I rose to the ranks to general manager. So I did that from 2015 to 2017, and now currently my project, Urban Trade, is a fiscally sponsored project by yeah. Swamp. So it's come full circle, not not, not staff, now project. So it's it's really great. And that helps out, I would imagine, filmmakers tremendously because scraping together the funds to to finance your dream project uh, is a tough task. But Swamp can uh, provide you with grants. Is that how it works? Actually, no. The the way fiscal sponsored projects work is you are able to use their tax ID to get donations from um, or, or apply for grants through them that need a nonprofit status. But when you take individual donations, they get a tax write-off, 100%. Okay. So that's the incentive to use. Plus they have the expertise on how to do budgets and then they pay all your cast and crew with the funds that you raise. So you you take that whole accounting part out of the project. So you no, can- Tell us how um, Swamp is involved with your new film. Well, 
you worked with them to help pay for your project, um, where they were the ones paying your staff or paying your crew. Um, you were raising the funds. Tell us about how that worked with putting it together from start to finish. How long does a project like this take to complete? Oh, goodness. It's still not done. But we started, I started my uh, my agreement with them back in May. So okay. they provide mentorship, networking, um, people that know about Swamp know that this project is backed by a very well-established organization. And since they believed in my project, that gave me more legitimate legitimization. Is that a word? Um, so they were more apt to work with me because this is actually my first short film, my first narrative right. film. I usually do documentary work. So um, to have their backing and to have um, me for them, for me to go to for advice, that was very helpful too. I know when I've worked in projects similar to this in the past, when we were try, trying to raise funding for films we were looking at, we'd put together something where you get the actors and you'd call it a sizzle reel, where you'd go out and actually shoot some scenes of the film to put it together to get your backers. Did you have to go through something like this or are you doing something like this for your film? Actually, I the reason why I was propelled to do this was uh, Houston Media Source has this uh, filmmakers project because they got all this new gear that you um, that they uh, provide like the Sony Venice camera and all the bells and whistles that come with it. And I submitted a script to it and it got picked on the top three. So um, there's actually three other projects that are going to be showcased. Um, so since I had the equipment already to use um, as uh, in kind, all I had to do was find cast and crew. So it, really all I had was a script. I didn't need a sizzle reel. Okay. That's what, that's what I made. <laughs> right. And w tell us about the topic of the film, because this involves human trafficking. Tell us about that. So the log line for Urban Trade is an ordinary day takes an unforeseen turn when two teens follow a graffiti artist they just met. And it's, it came about, I was inspired by this story when I heard an NPR story um, back in 2015 about this girl who, you know, met a friend and she took her to a house and sold her without her knowing. She was about 13. And those uh, people who bought her, like, sold her off to customers that came by to, to sell, uh, buy drugs. So somebody who knew her from the neighborhood recognized her and rescued her. So this story is based on that story that I heard, but it's totally fabricated. It's not real. Um, but I just look back to my own time when I was a teen, like something could, like that could have happened to me. And so sure. I wish somebody had told me that things like that could happen to you. If you it's don't. Look right. So I have a question. Sure. Yeah, go ahead, Frank. Hey, Mr. Wood. Yeah, so um, I think your project is, I think your project is going to be great. Um, the question I had, because like, for those who don't know, Houston does leave the nation in sex trafficking. Um, how much research did you pull from those, from, from that research of, of, of Houston and, and, and that horrible past that we had with sex trafficking for your project? Oh, that's a great question. I actually um, hooked up with Project 146, or Love 146 which is a nonprofit here in Houston and nationwide that um, provides education for child sex trafficking. Um, I also consulted with the Houston mayor's office. Um, they have a task force on human trafficking. Um, I also consulted the um, GLAG, uh, Greater Houston um, Partnership of Hotels, because they have this whole program um, focusing on human trafficking and recognizing it happening in hotels and motels in, in the greater Houston area. So, um, and then also the people that I heard on the radio, that was um, Child Advocates. Um, they were a great resource as well. Well, let me follow up on what Frank was asking, because he was heading in the same direction I was. Did it shock you to learn how much of a role Houston has in uh, in human trafficking? Actually, no, it doesn't. Um, it's just that the, the one that we really think about Houston being known for is like bringing girls from other countries and then selling them off to do like domestic labor or, yeah. you know, uh, prostitution. 
what I'm aiming at, this nuance, it's a nuanced form of human trafficking where it's domestic. Like the girls in the film are citizens. They're, you know, extra or, or, you know, ordinary girls that you meet on the street. And it just so happens, you know, this can happen to them too. Right. You call yourself, uh, consider yourself a multidisciplinary artist. What does that mean? Uh, it just means that I use different art forms to create a um, a project. So I like to use poetry, photography, collage. Um, I also do um, filmmaking, which is not the same as multidisciplinary. Right. Um, uh, but it does take all those different aspects to make a project. But you're collaborating with others. Like you shouldn't really do that by yourself because then it will be terrible. <laughs> I want to ask you, I don't want to get, I want to make sure we get to this before we end the interview, but um, you're very active in the Filipino community. What do you have coming up uh, regarding that soon? That's right. Thank you for that. Um, so October is Filipino American History Month and uh, it closes on Halloween every year. Uh, but this year I, I'm the vice president of FONS, uh, Filipino American National Historical Society, uh, the Houston, Texas chapter, and we are hosting a free family night um, in the, in A-Leaf, so A-Leaf Art House. It's on Bucina, uh, I believe. And it's going to be trick-or-treat or, or like a costume parade for the kids at five. And then we have film night. So All right. So it's a little rose. It's a um, independent film by a another Philippine ex-filmmaker uh, about um, just being undocumented and your struggles on how, how to deal with them. Sybil Joy Signs. She is a content creator, multidisciplinary artist, and uh, her look for her new short film, Urban Trade. She's also our Film Friday guest. If you're interested in the Filipino night uh, screening she was just talking about, we'll put some uh, information in our social media post, a link for that. Thanks for being here, Sybil. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm All blessed. right, you take care. Good seeing you. Okay, we are going to move on to Dr. Chandra Mattal, who is uh, the architect for all intents and purposes of the Advanced Technical Certificate in Medical Biotechnology. Good morning to you, doctor. How are you? Thank you. Good morning. Very well. I hope you are doing well. Thank you. For, so for those who may not be aware, I know this is a very growing field. We've talked about it on the show before, but tell us uh, medical biotechnology, what does that involve? And um, tell us a bit about what you foresee with job possibilities. Uh, medical biotechnology, of course, is the technology primarily geared towards uh, developing uh, new diagnostics, uh, new medications, uh, things medicine is changing from chemical to biology, uh, and also doing a lot of quality control work in terms of the uh, production of materials, working with the corporations. Uh, we have now in Houston a great opportunity in terms of next year, we have a TMC3 project, um, new medical research part being set up by a consortium of uh, four institutions, UT, uh, Baylor, MD Anderson, and Texas A&M. Uh, so there are a lot of new things are happening in Houston uh, for the future. And I think the, the job opportunities are going to be there. Coming up, uh, it is expected 25 to 30,000 new jobs will be created for this new complex. Not everything in medical biotech, but considerable amount of that will be in absolutely. Now, for students who may be thinking, you know what, I'm not sure if I want to go on to a four-year college. I may just want to get a two-year degree and go out and work with that. Is that viable with going to HCC and getting out and getting a job right away after you're finished with your program? Uh, absolutely. In fact, uh, this is a very good opportunity for our own students who complete associate degree uh, with the biological sciences and few additional health science uh, courses, because uh, that is a prerequisite uh, uh, for the program. Of course, if somebody has in addition to a associate, they have already a biological bachelor degree, uh, that is fine too. So uh, yes, absolutely. I think it's a great opportunity for our own graduates with associate degree. 
Uh, it's a one-year training program. They don't have to go to four years of the college. And you also, our cost factor, as we all know, in community colleges is far lower than yeah. it would be at a four-year college. So it is a win-win situation. And the great jobs uh, are opening up. Uh, I think uh, this point may come uh, at some point in the discussion. The good salaries are being offered in the medical biotechnology field. Today. What type of salaries are we talking about when students graduate? What can they start at and what's the median level? Uh, the average salary in this area, in the Houston or Texas area, is uh, in between forty six dollars to $47,000. Wow. Uh, okay. And uh, yes, yeah, so th that is what the salaries are. And um, what makes our program here at HCC unique? Uh, I think one of the thing is, of course, Houston is uh, uh, present in a, uh, we have a Texas Medical Center, which is a world-renowned place to begin with. And it has so happened uh, that although nobody expected it, nobody wanted it, unintended, that we have a, we are in the middle of the COVID pandemic. Yeah. What that has done is that has really offered some new, opened up some new opportunities. What is unique about our program is, and I like to say this with a, a great degree of uh, pride and confidence in HCC. Uh, our training program is going to be very much oriented towards research-based uh, training. The reason being that uh, if we have got a good technicians, good technologists, uh, they will help both in the developing diagnostic products and developing new, uh, new generation of medicines if they have, and also we have in Houston, a robust industry, uh, which we call the clinical trial industry, which is also part of right. medical biotechnology. So I think all this put together, our program is going to be unique, that we are going to be uh, training our students in a research orientation. So they will be learning the technology, but the orientation will also be research, so that when they go, they are ready to walk in into a research lab and start working rather than having to spend another six months uh, uh, by the companies training them and all that. So they will be uh, very much ready. Number two, uh, they will be, we'll have uh, internship opportunities because we are developing good partnerships with a lot of corporations in Houston uh, for this program. But of course, as we all know, workforce programs exist to help the industry. So sure. we are doing that. Um, you mentioned biotech companies in the Houston area, but is this the type of job where you can uh, start working uh, while you're getting your degree and have a job lined up by the time you graduate from the program? Uh, yes, actually, we have got, uh, we have some corporations who have already told us that they are interested in sending their current employees to get this training. Oh, wow. That's right. Yeah. And uh, from what I have uh, been able to gather is they might also sponsor them uh, for this uh, for this program. Besides that, we will have, of course, the students who can always apply in these companies while they are in the training. Uh, and of course, we will have the internship opportunity, which is a stepping yeah. stone towards getting a job in the company. Sure. Yeah. Internships are, are certainly invaluable when it comes to uh, getting the right training. Um, once again, you mentioned it's a one-year program that you could sign up for. When are you signing for classes? Do people start? Can they start in the spring or is it something you need to start in the fall? No, we are already uh, planning. We are already enrolling students for the spring session. Okay. So we will be doing it. Uh, we already have our lab facilities at Coleman College, and uh, we are getting ready for the spring semester. Uh, so if you're interested in a promising career in a growing field, I mean, they're looking for biotech uh, workers right now, as you've heard, uh, we'll have some information on HCC's medical biotech training program. Dr. Mittal, thanks for being here with us this morning. Um, we're going to put a link to your program in the social media post for the show. And you've got registration opening on October 25th for the spring. Uh, yes, it will be opening. Uh, we are, of course, website already has all the information. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Mittal. Have a great day. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All Be right. safe. 
Okay, we are going to move on to our HCC News and Information, Frank Cooper. Uh, Frank, we've got a piano recital uh, coming up. Magola's Piano Recital. I hope, I'm saying, I hope I'm saying that right. This is a small in-person recital that features Tali Magola's U of H Associate Professor. So it's 7.30 p.m. Friday, October 22nd, which is today, at Spring Branch Performing Arts Center, Theater 2. For more information about that, email joel, uh, J-O-E-L dot love at hccs edu to register. Okay, a couple of things involving costumes. We want to cover them both, or Halloween, I should say. Today's your deadline for the costume contest. You can order, you can um, uh, win three types of gift cards, first, second, and third place, ranging from $150 to $50. Good deal for first, second, and third. Uh, we'll have a link to upload the photos of you and your costumes in our social media post, the way it works. Student Life's holding the contest. You get in your costume, take a picture of yourself, upload it, students vote on it. If you win, you could win an e-card. Also, Student Life is hosting a drive-in movie with, of course, everyone loves the Adams Family. 7.30 to 10.30 p.m. Wednesday, October 27th. It's in person at the North Line campus, but it's a drive-in. Safe thing for you and your families. It's free. It's a free night under the stars. You've got to sign up to reserve your parking space. We'll have a link to that as well. And Frank, our work-study students are getting a raise. Absolutely. So wages will be increased at $13 an hour to ease the financial burdens on students have continued to face since 2020. Contact the financial aid office or email hcc.workstudy at hccs.edu. And keep in mind, we just mentioned it with the biotech program, all of HCC's classes for the spring are gonna be online and available for registration starting Monday. So make sure you register early. We've got five ways to learn, two of them are in person, two of them are hybrid, and of course, in-person classes, you want to go to a class on an HCC campus, yes, we are doing that again now. So you need to sign up early because the classes are a lot smaller. Go to hccs.edu slash now to register starting Monday for the spring semester. Okay, Frank, lots to talk about. First off, thought the Astros were over with, but never write them out. They're coming home to play tonight, and they could go to the World Series again. If I remember correctly, a certain guy said last week that the Astros would win in six. Oh, I wonder who said that. Could be. Could be. I don't I know. I don't know, Frank. Uh, well, we'll let's, let's be frank here, no pun intended. They're, yeah. they're the better team, better rotation. Um, the, the Red Sox have some bop at the top of their lineup, but they don't have the depth. Um, you know, they're the better team. And I'm, I'm hoping to see Dodgers Astros part two. That's yeah. what I want to see. I don't give know. It to, the, give it to the American great. public. We all want to see yeah. that. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. I don't know. I was surprised, though, at how many diehard Astros fans were writing on, was it Tuesday, saying, you know what? These guys aren't going to win another game against Boston. It's just not happening. And I don't see it happen. Boston's going to, you know, win out. And uh, look what happened. They won two games. They're coming back home. And they got a chance to go to the World Series tonight. I mean, fans got to realize no team is perfect. I mean, yeah. like, look, yes, we, we struggle here and there with our hitting, but, you know, Boston has struggled all year long with their pitching. Chris Sale looks like a former show of himself. Um, you know, the Dodgers, they have issues with consistency as well. I mean, these four teams all have issues. It's yeah. just who can take better advantage in the, in, in that in those 90 frames in that game. It, it's, it's who's going to come up on top. And I think they actually have more – they have more strengths than, than, than Boston does. All right. On to, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens because next week we'll know who's going to be in the world series and uh, hopefully your hometown heroes, the Houston Astros will be securing that either today or tomorrow. Hopefully today, get it done. Take a few days rest. Hey, let's talk football. Best football team in the city. Got news for you folks. It ain't the Texans. No, Houston Cougars return to the football field tomorrow uh, to play East Carolina. They could go 6-1, and one, which is really their best start in years. They've got the Big 12 coming up uh, in the next few years. There's just, you know, the, the, the sky's the possibility for Houston right now, and they're really, uh, they could be on the brink of something special in the next couple of years. 
Absolutely. I mean, I think moving to the Big 12 is really going to help them. You know, these these se- these seasons um, for the next couple of years are going to be great for the resume because as, 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 you know, a recruit or a head coach that goes into these kids' uh, kids homes yep. in the Houston area, you have this now to now use as a recruiting tool. But, hey, you know, in, in, a, in a small town conference, you know, we, you know, we was cream of the crop going to the Big 12 with more resources. You know, we want you we want you five star recruit, uh, five star recruit to come to our, our school and make Houston an even bigger name and make the Big 12 uh, help make the Big 12 a mainstay. So I think this is great for uh, a great recruiting bridge. You know, I saw a uh, meme on Facebook the other day that said the Houston Texans are worth three point one billion dollars. The Tennessee Titans are worth two point six. Switch the teams and use the extra money to pay Carlos Correa. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Switch teams back. Let's get the Oilers back in town. Give the Texans to Tennessee. Let them be their problem. And, you know, we'll take back the uh, the the fake Oilers and bring them back to town and make them legit once again. I don't know what's going on in Kirby Drive, but we obviously – how is it that everyone in this town knows – it seems like everyone could run a team better than the people that are in charge of the Houston Texans? Yeah, I mean – it, this is this is a, a classic example of you know an owner giving too much power to the people he's giving power to you yeah. know and it's like it's like you know the great the, the great Yankees owner you know Steinbrenner he uh, uh, he was one of those guys that he was so plugged in and and there was there was clear autonomy and if you didn't do a good job you was out of there there was no time wasted yeah there was no, yeah like well we'll wait and see like this clear autonomy i think i think the owner with the Texans. i know i know his father passed away a couple years ago unfortunately but there's no autonomy there's no clear autonomy well there's they do have they're range. consistent with that with that model for the yankees but the thing is in texas at the Texans, um, you know, and Kirby, if you do a great job, you're out of here. <laughs> J.J. Watt, Deshaun Watson, about gone, you know, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. The list could go on and on of all the Texans. How many Texans have gone on and won Super Bowl rings after they left the Texans? You yeah, know, it, more of them that are over at Kirby right now. Yeah, it's a culture thing. And we see all these ex-players flourishing in, in other, in other uh, teams, other franchises. Yeah, that shows amazing. Lack of culture it? here. Yeah, what what a what a what a disgrace. But hey, you get to watch another game with them this weekend, and they face their old teammates with uh, JJ Watt and DeAndre Hopkins, uh, undefeated team playing your sad sack Texans. All right, that'll be fun. Okay, <laughs> uh, basketball season is about to get started. We'll talk more about that next week, Frank, because it's too early to uh, say what's going on there. But hey, let's wrap up today's show. Thanks for being here. On Monday, it's going to be music. Monday. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So we'll be treated to some blues from a local queen, Keisha Pratt, who won the yep. biggest prize of them all. Some would say the internal, the International Blue Challenge in Memphis just a couple of years ago. It was the first time a Houstonian, a Houstonian brought that home. So shout out to, uh, to Miss Keisha, and I can't wait to see her. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Monday blues here on uh, Up to the Minute. All right, Frank, good seeing you. We'll see you next week. You too as well. All right, and we'll see all of you Monday morning live right here for Up to the Minute. 